another Bloomboro Early Access Deck Guide in today's video. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're having a magical day. Thank you for taking the time to support. My name is Hello Good Game. Pleased to be your host within this Magic the Gathering Arena Deck Guide video, breaking down our latest deck guide, Orzhov Vampires, new to standard, thanks to the latest set, Bloomboro. We'll be breaking down uh, said deck list in depth, discussing the strategies and synergies in depth, providing you with a deeper understanding of how to pilot the deck effectively. Furthermore, demonstrating against the best players and decks in game. Uh, this is no joke, uh, a VIP invite event only for fellow content creators. So it is some of the best content for you all here today. And of course, uh, after demonstrating our deck, we will conclude with our channel news, wrap up thoughts, and of course, deck review. If you want to help out, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel, dare I ask. And of course, uh, the Discord is open if you ever need a hand with anything. Cheers. Have an absolute magical day once again. Uh, kick back, relax, and enjoy. Let's take a look at the deck. It's a new laugh record. The Dark Knight. Absolutely. Uh, what a banger. It's, you know, you're going to see this where everybody's like, oh, this deck's the best when the set first comes out. Um, and... It's just a common phenomenon where uh, people don't really know how to interact appropriately with the new builds. And, um, you know, that's that can be quite troublesome uh, for their prioritization, uh, you know, of removal or just interaction in general, right? So uh, the bat deck revolves around our core card, Zoraline, Cosmos Caller, 3 mana, Three power, three toughness, legendary creature, bat cleric with flying and vigilance. Whenever a bat you control attacks, you gain one life. This is, uh, well, not bad. It's pretty good, specifically as uh, it is a, um, a synergy within our deck, the gaining and losing of life. More on this as we work through. Whenever it attacks uh, or enters, you may pay two and lose two life, right? Uh, if you do, return target non-land permanent with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finale T counter on it. Um, so if you know it's gonna be removed, it just gets exiled for that second time. Um, but that's okay. We don't really mind too much. So again, we want to be, um, you know, filling the battlefield with bats, uh, attacking with them, then gaining life from that, and that life gain will uh, sustain all of our pay life abilities, which you know we do have multiples of here in the build. Um, and then coming full circle, we're gonna go to the Lunar Convention Convocation, my apologies, two mana, and enchantment, and at the beginning of your end step, if you've gained life this turn, each opponent loses one life, and at the beginning of your end step, if you gained and lost life this turn, create a 1-1 one, one bat creature token with flying. Uh, furthermore, we can pay two to pay two life and then draw a card so we can force it, right? Um, so this is really, really quite good. Um, a, we can force our opponent to lose life. B, uh, we can generate the 1-1 one, one bat tokens, which is quite nice. Um, all we need to do is both lose and gain life in the same turn. Uh, it itself can force the loss of life, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, the token it creates is post-trigger, so would not trigger itself. However, uh, there is lots of life gain in the deck. Before we get to all of that, though, um, you know, another new card that's going to capitalize on that life gain, the Essence Channeler, 2 mana, 2 power, 1 toughness, back cleric, and uh, if you've lost... Uh, life this turn, it's going to gain Flying and Vigilance. And whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Furthermore, when it dies, put its counters on another creature that you control, which is very, very good. Oh my goosh. Um, so that is absolutely phenomenal. You can even, if your opponent blocks it, kill your own creature, and then those counters go somewhere that wasn't blocked. You know, uh, so very sneaky, uh, very effective, okay? Um, so, you know, that's going to be kind of the core of the deck. Um, but we still have more new cards uh, that we're incorporating here. The Dark Star Augur, 
three mana, two, three with flying, and at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library, put it into your hand and lose life equal to its mana value. We can cast this for four, activating its offspring, generating that one, one token copy of it, which is really cool because A, it's another bat for the Cosmos Caller. Um, which is really cool. B, you know, that's a straight up card advantage. Um, and we also now are losing life, right? Uh, another way to trigger the convocation fairly consistency, consistently, sorry. Um, aside from that, you know, uh, general lifelink, uh, is going to be quite helpful in that manner. Ruin lurker bat one mana one, one flying lifelink at the beginning of your end step. If you descended this turn, scry one. Um, that can be good to fill the grave as we can bring it back in a recursive manner with Zoraline. And then the Deep Cavern Bat, uh, also a 1-1 with Flying and Lifelink, this time for 2 mana. And when it enters, look at an opponent's hand and exile a card from it until uh, it leaves the battlefield, which is quite nice. On the top end of the deck, Alcazot's Deepest Betrayal, 5 mana, 4-4, four, four, Flying, Lifelink, Bat God, Legendary Creature... When it attacks, each opponent will discard a card, and for each opponent who can't, you draw a card. And whenever an opponent discards a land card, create a 1-1 one, one bat, which is super duper helpful, obviously. And when it dies, return it to the battlefield tapped as the Temple of the Dead, which can transform back into the Deepest Betrayal for 3 mana and a tap total of 4, uh, if a player has 1 or fewer cards in hand. Okay? Um, and then, you know, not really a bat but it helps us lose life and generate card advantage like the dark star augur gix three mana three three legendary creature phyrexian praetor whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents its controller may pay one if they do draw a card and we can pay seven to discard x cards exiling the top x cards of target opponent's library and you may play lands and cast spells from among cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost which is pretty cool um and then paying life also within the deck via bitter triumph two mana additional casting costs three life or discard the discard's not bad right the paying life is not bad right they each hold their purpose for us here and uh, that is at instant speed more removal within the deck three copies of cut down one mana instant speed destroying creature with total power and toughness five or less Tagged with our lock foin scorn for two at sorcery. Target creature gets minus three, minus three until the end of turn. You gain two life, right? So that is the balancing act alongside bitter triumph. We can also bring our creatures back via the virtue of persistence for seven um, from any graveyard at the beginning of your upkeep to your battlefield, which is nice. Um, only downside here is grabbing it with the auger. It's seven mana, but it probably won't happen often and while well, you've got a ton of life gain to sustain yourself speaking of that um the case of the uneaten feast whenever you uh have a creature enter the battlefield gain one life right and then to solve it gain five life in a turn once it's solved we can sacrifice it to play creatures from our graveyard for the turn which is pretty cool mostly looking for the life gain whenever we play a creature or have it enter which is pretty decent um we can also pay life and lose it to activate the convocation with the portal, as well as the caves. Pretty nice there. Uh, gaining life within the Restless Fortress creature land. Um, uncounterability through Cavern of Souls. Keeping it consistent within a front-ranged low-curve aggro deck through the courtyard. And a couple basics to make sure we get to where we need to go. 24, uh, sorry, 2.4 average on 23 land. 23 creatures, 14 non-creatures. Ooh. I hope you enjoy. Um, it seems very powerful. Again, as for mentioned, uh, early on in a set, um, it's hard, though. It's, like, really aggressive with the damage output, all, all honesty. And it has a lot of lifelink. A lot of life gain. Um, maybe a better... Orzhov lifelink or life gain deck than our previous variant, which was quite successful, right? We lost uh, Voice of the Blessed, but this Essence Channeler is no joke, honestly. 
So I hope you enjoyed decklist in the description below. Leave a like, drop a comment as well. Subscribe to the channel. Community Discord always open for you. Enjoy today's gameplay. Let's roll out. Going first. Ooh, a little bit of an awkward curve. That's for certain. But. Bats are going to bat. Hello. Kind of want to keep this for four. Let's see what we find. Hmm. Okay. So it's like the Orja Flicker deck. Or I guess it kind of bounces. Nice. It was a top deck. Let's start to match it. Just looking for that fourth land. If not... They're going to be double playing that, right? Guys, I don't think they played a land here. That's an enchantment, not an artifact or creature, but... I would have played the fairy. I double block it, aren't they? We just need card advantage. Like, I'm t way too far behind. No blocks. I'm going to gain some life. Pay to bring back their channeler. That is groovy. Very nice. And then play another channeler. Oh, that's good. Just the pixie for discard? Fine. Which should we discard? We, f we have the auger, so this is online. Only if we also gain life. I mm. guess we discard it and keep the caller. Ah, oh, the wrong choice. This will go to five. I don't want to risk anything else. I'd rather just bank off this draw engine for as long as we can. 
and like them having their call, like they could easily just defend and then bring it back, right? Like, I feel like I'm, I'd almost rather take that role, you know? They're on upkeep. There's the draw. The three threes get through. That's their only life gain, though. So they don't have any loss of life for flying, but they would push it to a 4-3 minimum. Nothing to bring back. That is good, though. Absolutely. Watch them also have a backup. Thank God they don't have the mana to force a discard here. I guess you're not losing life there. And then that pushes us up to five to combo in. Oh, groovy. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, but now we've done it. <laughs> Classic HGG. So I guess we're going to play this instead. And now we've gained life and lost it. They would double block still. We go to six. I wouldn't mind the double block. Because then we can put our counters on the collar. If they do double block. And I think that's quite advantageous. More life gain. And then the chump blocker is pretty... Uh, awesome as well, right? I like that th this can bring back the enchantment, not just creatures. That's pretty groovy. Because the attack is going to trigger life gain. And then the ability is life loss, which then is literally what the enchantment requires, right? Oh, this is getting messy. <laughs> I don't care for this very much. Seven, ten damage. Wow, that is substantial. No! Should I have seen that coming? Was that in their hand this whole time? I kind of needed that. Is that really what you bounce? I guess, sure. I'm getting lucky with these lands <laughs> almost. Um... I gotta get this up in the air. Okay. It's life gain on ETB, right? We don't really care about that. Oh, Scoopadelphia. Not even finish the match, homie? It's a bat beatdown. We gotta go to the end. Ah, you really think I won? Huh. I mean, I'd like to think so, but 
I, I always try not to be so quick to judge because it bites me almost every time. I'll tell you why. Great game, though. I appreciate it. Going first, Double Cavern is not great. But, I mean, it curves. They are all bats. Just looking for a third land. Um, I might maybe name Phyrexian with one of them or Praetor, whatever. Uh, we'll see how this draw goes. Human token. Hello and good game. My hat's on backwards, so that doesn't work, but I tried. Are you there? No, you're a squirrel. I might regret that. But let's see how it pans out. It can still be the colorless, right? So whether we draw a white or black, we can still play the bat. And then if we draw black, we can play Gix. If we don't get anything, then we're in a bit of trouble. Just like a salt eye vine lasher, maybe. It's always hard to kind of forecast what you're playing against so early on. Well, at least it's playable, you know? <laughs> Two lands and a channeler. Let's go. This harvest, uh, when it enters sacrifice, it search library for basic land into the battlefield and shuffle, pay two, tap, sacrifice, gain three life. Okay, squirrel. It's so slow. I'll still take it. I don't want to allow them to search for a squirrel in their library, so if we could trade, that would be okay. Well, do they combo us? Early access event playing Atraxa. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting. Oh, I know what deck I'll build. Let me start with this new card. Who does that? Four mana, five, six. Gix is down. Are they going to take three life? No, they bring a Traxa out, as foretold. Now, this is where it gets quite funny. If only 
if you needed a deck list, why didn't you reach out? I would have been happy to share one with you. I'm just kidding. I am just carding. Hey, at least that's not usable. Like one mana should be fine. It. Oh no, they've got two mana. Oh no. They play the, no, well yeah, they could play the goose. Wouldn't be bad. It's not enough, but it's pretty good. What is going on with this two mana? I'm a little nervous. Okay. We're not hitting for weeks. Oh, we are. The one is tapped. Good game. I mean, we've seen some new cards there for sure. Atraxa is such a hard card to beat. Like, if you don't have that spot removal like we did here, you're, you're done. You're done. And if they, like, had counter magic instead, then, ah! Uh... Good game. Go, go, gadget. Bad attack. I see your bat. Philadelphia? That actually flows. Forced into the removal, racing to Alcazots. Bronco? We each have two copies. Isn't that wild? Perfectly balanced. I think the auger takes priority. Oh, I like that. We can stop the Bronco, which is nice, can we? They go for it to get their own auger. Interesting. It's worth it. I think. The offspring really is quite helpful there. Land and a rock collar, which is pretty good. That double draw there is really paying off. And they get to their bat before us, unfortunately. For some reason, I was thinking we were on the play. I guess not. No, they were because we copied their first bat. Just a stalemate, you know, with them going first with, you know, that's going to give definite advantage. We block Alcazots. Oh, well, they have to take our cut down. They should, like, it's hard. That's a hard, like, you, know, you got to take these other cards, but it's like you're forced into the cut down, right?
If I discard a land... So we'd be giving them a bat. Which sucks. Not ideal. And they can just replay. I'm not running the tree in this deck. I didn't think I'd be able to accumulate enough bats. But that is like hashtag working out. And them playing theirs before ours. A, being on the play. Um, it really gets... Because the, it, the summoning sickness drops, right? So unless I can get removal, it's not the right kind. We have to take that, or else they're going to dominate us. It's not ideal. Right? Maybe these are just like 10 drops they draw. <laughs> right? Couple of ten drops off the top. Let's go. That three drop is gonna win the game, right? Very nice. This is a lot of mana, so maybe the tree's worthwhile. Right? Dumping that mana into the offspring as well is quite nice. Mm-hmm. And still enough over. To play um, the caller, right? I would assume. Do they pay for it? Nice. That's actually pretty cool. I don't know about the Bronco, though. They're running it, I guess, as the, the loss of life trigger. I'm not sold on the Bronco. I do like bats, though. I'll tell you what. I'm into it. I mean, they've got plenty of flyers. We're not going to get uh, any damage through. force the discard. We do make a bat, which is nice. I'm sure they still just double block this easily. I mean, they see our hand. It's not much. Bring it in tapped. Or just jump blockers. Pretty aggressive matchup. There's not enough single target re removal. 
Just both going so wide. Look at those draws. We almost want to block with our augers, leave their augers alive, and try to somehow win the game that way, but they've got a lot of life gain. So we also have to try to mitigate that from reoccurring turn after turn. Good luck. I don't know. <laughs> I believe in you. It's nice to see that's first bat. So in all honesty, you get to see which cards are generating the value, right? Ooh, this is problematic. That's a lot of damage. They didn't saddle it, I don't think, did they? This is ridiculous. They got to tap the tree. But it's only one color, right? Not two colors. Woof. I think it's huge. Huge, did. All right, that's a big boy. Oh, removal on the top at instant speed too. Nice. Uh, this one. They're up at 15. They're going to go higher as well, which is crazy. So we are taking um, three, four, five, six, seven. So many, all of the damage. And then they could instant speed remove the bat to, you know, to deal s with something else, which maybe they wanted to do pre-combat before the blocks, but. 11 life. That's so substantial. Oh, I like that. I didn't even consider that. That's what makes Elliot the best. That's a nice heads up play. Oh, that was hot. On the go, keeping seven. Hello and good game. Let's dodge that life loss. Ah, Gix or Bat? That's a tough one. The fact that you can push it up twice in one turn is aggressive. Good removal. Good removal. The transfer of plus one counters is really nice with the card, though. Kind of demands exile. Another. Ooh! Double get lost. That's okay. That's okay. Gain that life! I kind of want land. They have to have more removal. 
three get lost in a row. Wowzers. Cast the fourth. Just get it over with. Put me out of my misery, dog. <laughs> That's what you're bringing to the table? <laughs> um... I like that card quite a bit, but. Are these map tokens, right? Yeah, that's a lot of exploring. All right. I like the draw. Hit for two. That enchantment's going to be pretty annoying. We got to rebuild, right? Oh, so slow. We should be able to just go over top of them with flying, right? That's good on tokens. Quite good, in fact. I will block. No, I won't. Who knows? Maybe. It's hard to tell. Maybe I won't. I need to survive. Well, I want Gix to trigger, right? Push up to three to dodge the rabbit. And the Vigilance is here. Pre-combat push up. Not good enough, I'm afraid. Let's get our tap landed. A fish token? That's pretty cool. Ooh, Archangel Elspeth is really good. Do we see a minus two here on the... Yeah, but I block this. Oh, it's got flying. I don't. Narver Mind. And then that pushes up the team, which is pretty cool. They draw over 10. That's quite nice. We need uh, airborne blockers. Oh, this land is brutal. Let's see what's in their hand there. Oh, just a land. 
That's a bummer. I thought we'd get a better pull than that. I am flooding so hard. I should have uh, forced life loss on the turn for flying. One mistake there, I think, right? We're in a bit of trouble. That's for certain. We need an Alkazots. We need that virtue back. That might get us. Double block it? Yeah. Watch them have a replacement. No! Oh, that's really good. Dang. Another... <laughs> cool. We could get up to 10. Are we surviving the hit? They've got life gain. I think this is lethal. Because it'll push it to 9. Oh, that saves them, though. Whoops. I forgot about that. It survives still, though. Uh, and they go to two. So many lands, this, like... A little aggressive. Five, then more tokens. Don't care about that so much. That five is aggressive. Doesn't have vigilance? Oh, it does from the virtue. All right. Down to nine. They go to seven. Uh, they untap, so we just need removal. I don't know how I've not found any. It's impossible. I could do this. Exile X cards and exile the top of their library and you may play uh, lands and cast spells. But they've already used literally all of their removal. Not this though. I'll give us lethal. I think we go in. Has this ever won the game before? This is crazy. We just need one removal spell. Oh, we should have paid life for it. No! I just punted. I just punted. We didn't pay life for it.
The, the, it would have given us flying, but we didn't get removal anyways. We didn't get removal anyways. But we did mess up there a bit. And we, yeah, how did we not get it? <laughs> That's just a good game for them. Nice match, though. Good game. Going first, three land. B-E-A yoked a full curve out, if I don't say so myself. Let's see if we can hold this till four. No, you're a hex mage. Interesting. I guess we leave it sit there, right? Get out of here. What is that thing doing there? This gets the draw for land, but they probably have removal. I know they've got removal, but whatever. Please don't do it. Bully! Looking for land? New. No. That's a hard one to throw. But the double draw would overpower it. Not bad, not bad. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. I'm a bat. Field wipe in three, two, one. Raids is pretty cool. They could, uh, they get hit there. I'm going to decline the heck out of this. My bats are more valuable than any draw they'll ever take. Hello. 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 Ooh. Ooh, 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 where are you going? Don't run away. Bringing out a Gix and then drawing four while simultaneously gaining one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six life. I'm going to London. All righty. Um, the Dark Knight has the spotlight shining right at them. Uh, it seems to be quite a common deck in the early access. Uh, every deck that, and the set is kind of like that. It's very much narrow band, um, cattle gating you into specific builds, but we're getting it around that. And it is, it's a simple route. A lot of these decks are cookie cutters, pre-built, stick them together. Uh, you know, you got your bats, you got your squirrels, so on and so forth. 
Uh, we did lizards earlier, and well, you know what? We're gonna do them all. We're doing all the tribes. See which one's best. That's the only way to get a fair judgment of it. So far, lizards doing real good. Uh, bats here, our second build, doing pretty good. Liking it as well. Um, I fear for otters. I fear for squirrels. Uh, quite a bit. The mouse deck, uh, I'm I'm thinking is gonna be pretty decent. Frogs, I've not seen yet, but um, it looks pretty aggressive. Uh, I think shoulder will be good against frogs, but I digress. We're you know definitely on a tangent here, but uh, liking the new set, I guess is what I mean to say. Even though it feels direct, not that that's a bad thing. Um, and it is, it's okay that it's that way because it is quite, like, there's a lot of variety, right? Like, as for mentioned, all of these different uh, unique tribal decks that are pretty good, it seems. Uh, whereas, you know, we have another set where it's like, oh, soldiers. It's the soldier deck. Or, oh, it's the rogue deck. You know? And it's very limited as to... Uh, the variety of decks that you're getting in a set so easier to build these decks maybe yes however i do think that they're holding their own quite nicely maybe not as dominant as some of the others but i'm sure we'll find one that's better than the others of course you have to stay tuned in the next where we dive even deeper like, comment, subscribe, become a YouTube member, join the community Discord, but most importantly, have an absolute magical day. Take care.